modern Ukrainian embroidery on bags, clothes and other accessories. How ordinary cross stitches turn into digital signatures for augmented elements of reality. Glowing threads that give old things a new life. Meet a unique master opening the art of Ukrainian embroidery in new forms for people all over the world on UA TV. It is the place where political prisoners were kept under two totalitarian regimes. The prison on Lonsky Street in Lviv is a monument to the crimes of the Third Reich, as well as the Soviet Union. In 1939, when Western Ukraine was seized by the USSR, there was an NKVD office here. During the offensive of the German troops in 1941, NKVD officers shot around a thousand people here before retreating. Until 1944, the building was occupied by the Gestapo jail. In addition, there were Einsatzgruppen based here, aimed at targeting the Jewish population. From 1944, the Soviet Secret Service returned here and used the prison until the collapse of the USSR in 1991. Today it is a museum of political repression, which tells about all the hardships of local prisoners in different years. In 2018, prison on Lonsky Street presented an unusual exhibition titled The Color of Prayer. The exhibition included more than 50 artifacts, mostly icons and napkins embroidered by female prisoners in this and in other Soviet prisons. It was forbidden to have needles and do needlework with the application of religious symbols. So the prison guards destroyed all the items that they found during searches. Yet in the most desperate situation, the victims of terror found the strength to embroider Ukrainian patterns and images for prayers. Fish bones, matches or branches were used as needles and the threads were taken from their own clothes. No matter how brutally the totalitarian state and system tried to destroy Ukrainian national identity, these fragile things have survived to this very day. After all, embroidery is not just a handicraft, but an essential element of the cultural code of Ukrainians. This conviction inspires the master to work and develop new and unexpected forms in this unique form of art. I'm involved in modern embroidery, and in this art I opened three new directions. They are known as glow art, digital needlework and palimpsest. The essence of this art form is that I basically applied modern embroidery on ancient towels. For 15 years, Tetyana Procheva has been traveling with her works around different countries and in this way is opening Ukraine to the world through embroidered patterns. This cultural diplomacy is a private initiative and Tetyana's work over her entire life. When I am traveling, I always hold master classes. My ultimate goal is to open galleries and offices in different parts of the world. To date, I already have offices in Israel, Spain and in the UK. Watch next in the program, why did Tatiana Procheva get fascinated and engaged in embroidering and how her travels inspire new forms? What is necessary to know and be able to create glowing and interactive accessories with different ornaments? Learn how the project Master of Crafts helped Tatiana put a new idea into practice. Discover the unique Ukrainian embroidery now on UA TV. Hand embroidery is a decorative and applied art, which almost all nations from prehistoric times were involved in. The remains of a Cro-Magnon man found in France were dressed in clothes with embroidered elements, and that was 32,000 years ago. In the 20th century, the totalitarian USSR aimed to reject the majority of elements of Ukrainian culture, including material ones, as it was an obstacle to the creation of artificial Homo Sovieticus. Embroidery with national ornaments was unofficially banned and was referred to as simply beautiful ornaments, without any context or meaning. Nevertheless, Tatiana Procheva understood from her early childhood that this was not the case. My mother taught mathematics, and in her free time she taught children embroidery. That is, my life work started in my childhood. I exhibited my first works at the school, where my mother with great joy held exhibitions of the works of her pupils. However, neither Tatiana nor her mother had access to historical sources, because reading the literature about traditions and culture of Ukrainians in the Soviet Union could result in problems with the KGB. After graduation from the institute and her son's birth, Tatiana forgot about embroidery, although in that period Ukraine gained its independence. She returned to this beautiful, creative art only at the turn of the century.
When my mother was still alive, we drank a cup of coffee in the kitchen. And I said to her that we both had made a lot of works. And I offered her to organize an exhibition to promote Ukraine through the embroidery art. It was with this collection that I began to travel to different parts of the world. I strongly believe that this was exactly what my mother wanted for me and was her blessing. Tatiana's collection was enriched with not only household items, but also with embroidered pictures with Ukrainian folk art. It included typical items, but in the 2000s, the master was among the first to promote Ukrainian culture abroad. And travels prompted Tatiana how to update and develop her own embroidery. The Japanese city of Nagoya hosted the 2005 Expo exhibition, and the Minister of Economy sent me there to represent Ukraine. A local master gave me threads. She spoke Japanese and I spoke English. I did not understand what the thread was, but when I came to my hotel room and put it on the table at night, I saw that this thread was glowing. Tatiana Procheva shares how she began to use innovations in her work, what features should be taken into account, and how it is all done to create the final product. How it is done Luminescence, or when an object emits light not associated with heat, has been known for several centuries. However, the nature of this phenomenon was fully unraveled in the 20th century with the development of chemistry. Luminous threads for embroidery have only recently appeared. Usually, it is nylon or polyester covered with a special fabric dye, using a special technology. Only 15 minutes in solar or electric light, and the thread can glow in the dark for 8 to 10 hours. Ukrainian embroiderers had never heard of such a thread until Tatiana started using it. I began to use this thread in biblical pictures, embroidering icons Nimbi. And it looks very impressive and allows one to focus on the icon in the dark. Then I started using it in modern accessories. The combination of traditional embroidery and the thread properties gave a very interesting result. In 2010, Tatiana managed to open for a short time an embroidery museum with a large collection in Kiev. It included new items with fluorescent threads. Journalists then asked the master how can this form of art be called. I didn't even know how to call it. And in the museum I had a portrait gallery with the image of Andy Warhol, who was the founder of pop art in the luminous technique. I said that since Andy Warhol was the founder of pop art, then I'm the founder of glow art, because the thread used is called glow in the dark in English. So journalists wrote about this new form of art, and it became a part of life. It is easy to order this thread online. There is a huge range of colors and thicknesses. Another matter is how to apply it. Tatiana began working in the modern technique of monochrome embroidery, creating portraits of famous personalities, including those from Ukrainian history. Images on a picture that seem white in ordinary lighting emit a luminous glow in the dark. Having mastered this, Tatiana started designing different accessories. I had to embroider five to six samples to see how it would look in the end. It is not so simple because sometimes it's impossible to find a place embroidered with luminous threads. Everything should be perfected. I love cats and designed a collection of accessories and bags with images of cats. For example, the Cheshire cat smiles in the dark. When the cat disappears, the only image that remains is its smile. Tatiana puts glowing patterns on ties and even jeans. She designs bags according to her own patterns, using one of the rarest materials in the world. Who could imagine that the legacy of the Soviet army a decade later would help the Ukrainian master promote her country abroad? Military cloth is made of wool. It has a water-repellent coating and is moth-resistant. This fabric was produced in the USSR. From all over Ukraine, its owner sent me about three meters of this unused fabric. And I use it to sew such accessories as bags, covers for mobile phones, for pants and for business cards. They are of high quality and very successfully represent Ukraine abroad. 
Ukraine. Uh, uh, In her pictures, Tatiana sometimes combines white luminous threads with standard white cotton threads. Such a technique allows her to add elements that become visible only in the dark. Glowing threads also help the master to update an old embroidery on the principle of palimpsest, or layering of modern patterns on items that date back to a century ago. I take old towels, old shirts and put modern embroidery on them. When you come to the gallery, you will see a collection of the old towels and shirts there. And it is exactly the lighting that brings this collection of exhibits to life and completely changes its view. Of course, Tatiana uses only durable items from homespun or other fabrics that have been properly stored all these years. Her embroidery technique reminds one of a traditional cross stitch and a damask stitch. Video tutorials on the internet allow anyone to master them. Classical Ukrainian patterns are, as a rule, floral and geometric ornaments, and their significance goes back many centuries. Each skilled master laid her information and each interprets it in their own way. For example, some people interpret the red-black color as joy and sadness. For me, black is a wealthy bride with a huge plot of land. I like the red and black patterns because I mostly use traditional elements in modern clothing. I consider them to be very stylish. The master always tried to give the foreign audience as much information as possible about her country and its traditions, and the search for the form led to a simple but unexpected solution. If the ornament itself was considered an ancient coat, then why not embroider a modern coat in the same technique? Tatiana found the answer during one of her trips to Japan, the QR code. Some years ago, the Ukrainian embassy in Korea offered me to represent Ukraine. They were going to exhibit my 45 embroidered works. And I got an idea to generate diverse information about Ukraine in QR codes. As a basis, I took a special towel, which was especially used to cover icons. On a special website, Tatiana generated QR codes with links to various articles and video materials and then put them on the edges of the old towel. It is enough to focus the camera of a modern phone or tablet and then digital music begins. Tatiana says that foreign visitors to Ukraine are totally amazed and impressed by embroidered QR codes. They come to enjoy an embroidery exhibition and such a presentation certainly surprises them. I propose them to use their mobile phones to scan an embroidery, and then foreigners can watch a film about Ukraine or film about their country, where I present this embroidery. This is really impressing and interesting for them. The master also began to design pendants with QR codes where, upon a customer's request, any information can be encrypted. Various foreign companies requested Tatiana to design exclusive accessories with hand-embroidered QR codes. UATV decided to go even further. In April of 2019, the project Master of Crafts highlighted Ukrainian augmented reality startup. Alexander and Maria Velichko developed the application that no longer works on QR codes, but on any sufficiently contrasting image, it can overlay a video or even a volume object in real time. Tatiana Prodcheva embroidered a new pattern with the word love in English. IT experts scanned it and entered it into the database. In the application, the 3D inscription Love Never Fails is projected over the image. This is the first hand-embroidered accessory that has an associated object in augmented reality. Tatiana can use it on any of her items. Today she's looking for new ways to develop the Ukrainian embroidery tradition and present it to the world. But the main goal of the master, in addition to opening representative offices abroad, is to restore her Kyiv museum. I'm still dreaming of my Glow Art Gallery in the center of Kyiv, where all the guests can touch Ukrainian culture through embroidery art. This includes a museum, a souvenir shop and a cafe, where you can relax, turn off the lights and see how the patterns glow.
відпочити, вимкнути світло і подивитись, як воно світиться.